we'll now move on to um, the second section, um, which in a way is inspired by the feeling that I've had that what amazes me about this programme is that students on it face so many things in their lives and yet they still manage to carry on, get through and produce amazing research. And so with that in mind, um, Debbie Anderson from Cohort 9 has agreed to, to look at that and think about ways of maintaining a focus on research when there's so many things going on. Um, Debbie was from Cohort 9, she's Associate Professor at Kingston Business School and her thesis, because as I say, I think it's interesting to say, was on professional learning in the workplace. So over to Debbie. Thank you. All right. Well, first of all, I just need to make a little bit of a, um, a point out to the, um, the, the slide. I've already had a little bit of a disagreement with Paul. Um, so I thought, well, we put Lancaster's logo on there because that's what we do, isn't it? And um, you're not very happy with that, Paul. So you can explain it over lunch, can't you, about the new logo. But I think this is the logo we're meant to use now. So, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So a few words of introduction. Um, when... Um, Paul asked me about sort of I don't know eight months ago or so something like that six months ago to um, to facilitate this session because it is a facilitated session I'm not planning to transmit any knowledge at all my first thought was why me I mean you know I'd, I've I've carried on with research but I've not published lots of really high quality journal articles and so on I've done what I could and I thought well, you know, that's, that's well then I thought hang on a minute research focus does not have to mean necessarily publishing in hugely successful and um, influential uh, journals and so on. There are other ways. So I've come at it very much from a sort of a, having a research focus for me is not necessarily just one, one size fits all. I've got a fairly open brief and I'm hoping that um, perhaps we'll tease some um, issues out on that um, shortly. So to help us with this um, part of the, um, of the day, you'll remember that um, Catherine emailed everybody and asked for contributions for, um, you know, how, how have you personally found, um, found your way in terms of maintaining the research focus? So I thought, well, that's fantastic. We'll have all this qualitative data, you know, we'll have lots of uh, words and I have to brush up on my phenomenographic analysis and do all sorts of stuff. Well, actually, we got seven respondents, so that was um, not quite as many as we expected but nonetheless seven quite thoughtful um, contributions. And um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll view this as Murray Saunders would view it. It's just a pilot. It's okay. It's, it's qualitative. It's good. It's just a pilot. So what I thought we'd do is start this session by having a look at some of the comments that people have made, or some of the themes, rather, that have emerged from the comments that people have made. Um, I'll draw upon and I've checked with everybody, Alison's just arrived, but I've checked, I think she's okay, um, that they're happy to, um, to contribute in person. I didn't want to contravene any ethical issues. Um, so basically what I um, found, there wasn't masses of data to look at, but we were, we've seen some themes emerge, um, and I've popped them all up there, and what we'll do is we'll work through those themes, and I'll ask the contributors to, um, to, hype, to, to expand on those. And then we'll perhaps have a little bit of time, we'll see how the time goes, to do some discussions in smaller groups. So the first theme that did emerge, and this was uh, across a number of, of, um, of participants, was um, about the importance of collaboration. So Peter, I think you, you were quite vocal on this one, you had quite a lot to say. Do you want to explain, explain a little bit more what you, how you see collaboration? Yeah, well, I, I, um, I'm Pete Boyd, I'm an Associate Professor at Cumbria I uh, made a decision, I think it was during my doctorate actually, that um, um, too much in the sector uh, research was positioned, certainly in, I'm in educational research, um, as an isolated individual thing. You know, lots of my colleagues saw it as that, something they had to do as an individual. And so I thought, well, I was in a capacity building job anyway, I was in academic development and teaching learning, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll um, start collaborating, and I just insist on collaborating. And so, um, Actually, I used to look at my PGC students you know, and new, new lecturers, and I'd see who got put in my box. <laughs> so my my feeling was I didn't network as much as I should in you know loads of networking, but I did collaborate. Nearly all of my work was collaborative, and the way that I did it though was to choose wisely and have one. You know, I didn't just collaborate with anybody. I uh, picked people who I felt would negotiate the contribution to a project, and um, and then. That. And I think the benefit of that was probably that even when I was driving a lot of these projects and papers, I felt a social responsibility. I like all the news of projects. <laughs> it 
We had to see more of a deadline for me because I felt I was letting me down in a way. And also, I, I chose people who had expertise. Many of them were not researchers, they weren't particularly hot on the research, but they had other expertise that they brought to, and characteristics that they brought to the collaboration. So, mm -hmm. that's mine. Yeah, okay. And Alison. Yeah, no, that's great. Alison, do you want to add to that? Perhaps just introduce as well as we go. That was a good... I can't chat as loud as people. Ah. <laughs> Who can, is what I say. Who can? Yeah, it's so similar to Peter, actually, because uh, part of my role as a director of the Settle was to actually encourage people to do pedagogy research, but then we got people started, and that was fantastic, because you were... You're kind of preparing to do research, but actually setting them up on the road to question and undertake really inquiry based uh, and evidence based information that we're only teaching and learning. Um, but it's also difficult when you're involved in <laughs> managerial positions to carry on doing anything like research. And uh, I used the second strategy actually, which is getting funding. Also bringing people in. So in my role as head of school, I've actually encouraged people to want to take research, got them involved. And again, it's that sense of responsibility, you've got deadlines, you've got you've got responsibility to the people you are working with in that research, and that helps you to kind of get things done. So uh, strategies which kind of call with all those, but working with people is very important. Um, I'm currently collaborating on a talk with an ex Again, we had worked together, we both know that we didn't invest any money in that. So we, we discussed the problems about finding time, we developed strategies together to find time and create time to do research, and um, that helps me move forward. Oh, do you want to just expand a little bit because we can jump to the next yeah. bit about the funding? Where, where particularly did you recommend well, that? Well, I think it was at the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> small funds for that, and, and those small funds are actually really quite critical. You know, Five thousand pounds in salary do a lot of it, um, and internally, I think it's important. Now, but uh, we've actually got some internal funds identified, and we're going with those as well. Because even if they're really small, it, it helps. It helps you to focus them, to get up the sorts of find the information back to where it's funding you. Um, and I cannot underestimate really the, the opportunities that kind of small pots of money can find. It builds up as well, so if we ever get back into <coughs> having a nature with large pots of money to spend, um, that, that, that experience <laughs> can, can lead to a bigger funding pot. Thanks, Alison. I, I would, reiter, I would um, endorse that as well. I don't know about your institution, but at mine, there's quite a big movement now to involving students as partners, a little bit like the uh, Mike Neary stuff. And um, we've got, you know, there's quite small pockets of money. I think in, in total it's probably 20,000 across the university for 21,000 um, pound pots of money, if you like, to do joint staff and student research, um, which, you know, at 10 pounds an hour, it's 100 hours of student work. Actually, you can gather quite a lot of uh, stuff like that. So it's definitely worth looking internally uh, within an institution to see what sort of um, schemes there are there, uh, that there are there. Um, thanks for that, Alison. That was great. Um, David, you, um, I think you're at the back somewhere, yeah? You, you mentioned on your um, submission about conferences. Do you want to expand a little bit on that? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's good to go present because it's good to have that. Um, um, so yeah, yeah start, it's probably, do you want to just stand? Is that okay? I didn't want to. Yeah, I think, I think it's good to present the work because it, it keeps you sort of ahead of your field as well. Thank you. Okay, so funding we've talked about um, already with um, with with Alison. Um, in terms of um, areas of research, quite a lot of the, well many of the, the people that responded talked about finding synergies, so really trying to think about how you um, combine um, practice and research. And one particularly interesting um, 
submission was about evaluation projects, and I think that was... Who was on evaluation? Yes? I mentioned mine. You did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's who, that's who I've put against to have a little talk. So do you want to tell people about your... Thanks. Hi, I'm Colin Davidson. I'm a dear father of Garden University. I'm a managerial role. I certainly wouldn't claim to be the actual head of the research I would say in terms of what I gained from the doctoral programme, I find it was only that email made me think about it, uh, passively using research approaches in nature in mm. terms of evaluation and a whole range of aspects. Mm. And find that I would tend to take a different take on it to say it's a strict or so you get mm -hmm. data. And particularly handling the more complex aspects of data and it's perhaps easy to take that aspect for granted. So I find and it's a way of looking at problems in the nature, say, particularly in evaluation. Also, dealing with policy, uh, the work involves trying to make sense of policy coming down from public service and uh, externally and translating that into internal policy and trying to explain itself. So, I think there are, I certainly found opportunities to continue to use and develop all the skills that I've gained through the program. I think also as a Having mm. proved it to at least to yourself, you yeah. would come, uh, particularly if you get an answer from an administrator, that uh, there's a certain mm. new. I find it it's easier to deploy uh, an evidence based response mm. uh, by applying mm. these types of skills. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We should have more time for it. Yeah, well, we've, we've, got, we've got a nice long lunch break, so plenty of chat time. Eileen, you were, um, con con um, commented on insider research, I think, didn't you? Do you want to? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Um, I work with the school, the University Forum for Human Resources Development is a member of, and we actually didn't get enough people asking for money. So we have to really bring human resource development, not just education, for small pots of money. Um, we actually had the amount of money to give some money for this type of research, pedagogical research, um, and the Society for Research and Teaching, yeah. but the deadline is always September, yeah. so that's always this problem of teaching starts and what yeah. you do. Um, and is there synergies of the inside of research for the world that is very helpful for the product which is Dino and Andrew Kendall, um, which is very, very helpful. Matt Allison talks about platform methodology, it's like a bit grander, I think, than inside of research. But basically using the job that we do to try and get it published. And I've had some success at publishing um, at a certain level, but maybe getting it up higher mm. to keep kind of the unique three star papers, four star papers, having it up and who knows what it would be next, you know, because maybe we have the things. But it's making that connection theoretically to what we're doing. Now, I think one of the challenges of inside the research is I want to stay employed and employable. And <laughs> sometimes the story you want to tell, and I think this program is brilliant at helping you start to tell those stories. But I'm really thinking of the, you know, writing the nuanced, deep ways where hopefully you can still keep your job and no such thing as truth. We all know that and our social <laughs> stories come out. But I think there's lots and lots of potential in there that I'm not reading an awful lot in the journals where people are brave enough, despite the challenges that my health and assessors hold it sets us. There's not an awful lot of people I can see, maybe I'm reading the wrong stuff. We're actually being brave enough, turning the lenses on our own institutions as knowledge productive places and writing about them. I've done little bits, um, but I'm not it's doing enough. Up, and the collaboration with other people who are interested in doing it, I think it's really wonderful. Thanks, Ali. That's good. Um, Julie, you had a, a little bit to add on getting involved in the supervisory process. Yeah, my, my point was basically trying to get onto the supervisory ladder and then to be a supervisor. So I found it quite difficult because I moved into a managerial position as well and opportunities became less evident for me. So I had to go to see the amount. Um, and it hasn't been a particularly easy fact or um, quick. <laughs> So it was a struggle, and it still is a struggle. Um, so take the time for us to go my advice and seek out budgie uh, looking for experienced supervisors and using them to the best of them. And also your personal opinions and other opinions as well can be personally supportive of you.
<laughs> I'll take your credit there. <laughs> okay, thanks, Julie. Um, however, there was a view um, out there that sometimes it's quite good to move out of the comfort zone, so not just to stick with you know, what we know and insider and so on. And the person who contributed this didn't, isn't actually here today, so I'll, I'll, but I've left it up there because I thought that was quite an interesting um, point. Um, and actually go and work out amongst other disciplines, really push yourself, you know, go out of the comfort zone, which is um, perhaps more akin to you know, finding some troublesome um, situations. Um, making space for research came through um, quite strongly. Alison, that was, that was one of your points, actually. Again, do you want to just add anything, how, give us any techniques as to how you might do that? Yeah. You can stand up again, it's fine. <laughs> go, on, go on, join me. <laughs> yeah. um, so National Teaching Fellow. Mm -hmm. uh, that had some money left in the last year, good fun. Um, and I used that to buy out a seven day account in a hotel in Rye with my colleague to actually sit and work two days. Mm -hmm. That was unbelievable. You've done that already? Yeah. Right, and that worked. That's in March. Mm -hmm. And it's so much done, and you can focus. You're not just applying in five minutes, you're actually immersed in something for a couple of days. And then I uh, managed to negotiate. Uh, research leave in the summer, so that just kept on the end of my holiday, which meant I could actually manage to do some writing. Mm. Um, when, I, when I went back out to the or we were around there, uh, that's like two days a month maybe, uh, um, the response was, well, I wish you do my research on Saturday morning. Your line manager may or may not be amenable to that, but it's worth kind of thinking about that. I just shut the day in my diary, every Friday in my diary last year is a research day out of one day. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very hard to test, mm -hmm. but you get it out of the university from the mm -hmm. And just protecting that time. I know when, yeah. certainly when I was writing up, I'm sure everyone's got their own techniques, but one of the techniques that I really tried to um, have was to reward myself what I, what I call a weekly writing retreats and, and just not do anything else but just immerse because I think you do need that immersion time don't you it's not you know, every Friday is quite nice but actually at some point it needs to be yeah. 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 Um, and then finally um, I think that was you again, David, wasn't it? You mentioned about engaging in continuous professional development, if there's opportunities come up for research training, um, to engage with that uh, as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, what I found for me is that I'm seeing a few students I'm exploring the universe. The universe more, I learned about you know, the field, the more I realised how little I knew, and there's still a lot that's still a massive gap. Thank you. Well, thanks to all of those contributions. Um, now we're going to try something that is perhaps a little bit more akin to um, going down Ray's troublesome route. Let's throw up a bit of and uh, and get you to do something. Okay, so. Forget me transmitting, I've not really got anything to, more to transmit. Um, I think it's time for you to, to talk to colleagues. Now, obviously, you've clustered into groups where you all know each other, which is outrageous. You don't, we don't like that as students, are we? So what I'm going to ask you to do is try and find someone around you who you don't necessarily know um, already um, to stimulate a bit more um, discussion. There's two questions that I'd like to uh, ask, and I think we've probably quite pushed for time. So we just, should we do half and half? Yeah, so 20 minutes. So we just do so. So perhaps this half of the room, let's see who we've got here. Um, perhaps a second question, actually. No? You want to do that? Who's the troublesome one? Is that Julie? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's have this half of the room thinking about what does actually having a research focus mean? What, how can you define that for yourself? Because I think what you said earlier, Ray, about we all sort of defend, you know, we say, oh, whatever. let's be proud of what our research is. It might not be four-star papers every year, but it may still be a way. So let, let's work on what your particular research focus could be so we can be proud of that. And perhaps, Murray, and so you could sort of spread yourselves around and well, stimulate. All of, all of you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And for this side of the room, now obviously some, some of you are still 
doing the PhD, so not, um, uh, it, you'll probably still find your way. But perhaps, you know, there are people out there who are thinking, some of our colleagues thinking about going into educational research. What piece of advice would you give them? Okay, you can be, think about what we've done. So groups of three or four, okay? Mess around a bit, let's go messy, let's not worry about messing the room up a little bit. Group round, groups of threes or four, and you've just got 10 minutes, and then I want some plenary. Okay. Guys, we're going to... Uh, I can't shout loud enough, Paul. <laughs> I need Peter. <laughs> okay. So to, um, to move towards lunch, which might be an incentive, um, obviously, we're not going to come up with any answers here. The idea really is just to get you thinking, to get you at least as well talking to each other. Um, but perhaps if from each group, if there is um, a, uh, maybe a, a brief statement that we could make, don't worry if you can't. Um, we'll start over on this side. So anybody want to volunteer? Does anybody, any group feel that they had some insight that they'd like to share with the rest of the, of the, of the group? What does a research focus? Great. Do you want to introduce yourself, by the way? Uh, came to go out, so two years into the program, we're a group made up of people very early on in the program, and one person much further on. And the key piece of advice we've been given is to give up our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that might not be quite the practical route. Thank you. Okay, what about this group? We had quite a big. Uh, oh no, I've got a volunteer. Uh, yeah, sorry, Ian Lewis from University of Liverpool. This group is very similar uh, split to that one, yeah. and, and our discussion was slightly closer to like things like stop volunteering. Uh, so research focus means adjusting yeah. your the rest of your life as much as is possible yeah. to to making this bit a serious focus. Yeah. Which back to, is back to what Alison said, wasn't it, about making space and thinking very sick. So what type of thing could you give up volunteering to do? Sort of committee work? Yeah, new projects, yeah. applying for jobs. Yeah. yeah. Disrupting your life as much. I, I, I would concur with that because I, one of the biggest things that I found freed up space for me was when I stopped being a course director where you're at the mercy of people and took up a role um, sort of advising on learning and teaching. Now that, because that became, A, it gave me synergies with the, the PhD, but also I was in control of that. And I think that is quite important to think, which bits of your job take up time that you can't plan for and which bits can you do where you cur you're actually in control and then you at least stand a chance of doing what Alison says in terms of, um, uh, uh, of that. So thank you for that, Ian. Uh, right, so we've done your group. What about the little group at the back? There's some quite interesting conversations going on there when I zoomed in. Any contribution? Um, I think there was a sense that there's more tension yeah. Around the uh, research areas. Yeah. Um, and some of us are in better positions than others in certain ways. Yeah. So uh, there was some elements around job related and how um, that they're probably driven by external forces in many ways around the research areas. And it's difficult in that to develop research focus. Yeah. Whereas some of us are basically, it's just find the fun. Find, find the fun. Yeah, find the fun. Looking at what is fun yeah. because then. Then you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't do all hobbies, I absolutely refuse to. Yeah. Um, I don't give up my weekends, I absolutely refuse to have a plan. Mm -hmm. um, so, how do I make sure I find a, a space in which to do it? It is fine. I think Peter would concur with that. You actually wrote that, I think, in your um, submission, didn't you? And then I tend to cheat by putting my um, diary. Oh, very important. <laughs> Meeting with myself about that research project, absolutely. <laughs> That's good, thank you for that. There's a group here, did you want to contribute first? Oh. Um, we, we struck the site when I was a That's fine. But surprisingly relevant though, because I think it was about the nature of um, the institution you're working in and the institution, it's about being subversive within your institution in the way you work mm -hmm. and that you may have an institution that appears very managerialist but you can actually find spaces and it's a little bit of fun here as well and I think actually being um, a researcher and being on a doctoral program is sometimes quite a subversive activity mm -hmm. and you do have to sort of look at your institutional culture. Do you really need to spend that much time on all those reports? 
thoughts and so on, and then rethink the nature of your own working life. Mm -hmm. Um, because no one's going to do it for you. Okay, thank you for that. So then those groups, was there any, did you want to add anything to this group down here? Okay, let's move to this side of the room. I think there's been a sort of merging of, of, of questions, but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, let's start over here. Was this one big group? Or two groups? Two groups. Okay, yeah, there's a group of four. Did you want to? Um, I mean... Hold on, we'll have to all listen to one person. You might stand up, Eileen. Go on, you can do it. It was quite a number. It was one of the things that I wanted to say about the things you were doing when you were doing this morning. And it brings back the collaboration and the networks and the community and the networks going. But I think one of the messages I want to say, you know, collaborate with the people you collaborate with. Because sometimes collaborating in your institutions, you both can't fit in with the ORD or the VEC or whatever is going on to know that. So as long as it's three out of one, you get two out of it's not one, um, or you collaborate externally. But also, if you're at a certain level, if you really need to collaborate with somebody who's better than you, you know, somebody's going to push you. So, uh, Your top tip, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and then we have another group of four. Do you want to add to that? I like this idea of this immersiveness, oh. uh, encourage subversiveness in, in our university, where people feel that they have to go to work because they, they can't necessarily work at home. So we offer a desk for people to come to. And so they're coming to work, so they feel like they're coming to work, and that's okay, but they're not going to their own office. Mm -hmm. They come to our office, and they hire the day, and they write. And that's all they do is write. That's a really good that's technique. That's the purpose of the day. Yeah. So if you have the opportunity, you can offer that to other people. What or, a nice and vice versa. Excellent. It works very well. Yeah, really nice exam. Actually, I've got a colleague who, um, She's doing the PhD here, actually. She's on cohort, well, whatever it is, just going into uh, thesis mode. And she has an office in my building, but I never see her at the moment because she's decided that she's taken up residence in the postgraduate suite in another faculty. So no one knows her, no one sees her, and she does exactly that. So, but for us to proactively offer our space is, is a nice one. Thank you. What was going on in this group, then? Don't worry, it's nearly lunchtime. You don't have to... Um, for us, it was... To, to maintain our research focus, and I think what came out of that discussion was we did have various ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think that, as was said earlier, you, you need to have the discipline, you need to say no to things, yeah. and you need to make space. But having said that, is it up to you how you work best? Do you work best in the day of week? Do you work yeah. best cleaning up your time? So want? find your own rhythm, in yeah. other words. So yeah. the, you know, it's not, it's not sort of one thing for everybody. Mm -hmm. but to, to recognise the way that you work this, and then to be quite disciplined about clearing the space and that Excellent, thank you. Uh, right, I don't know what we've got here. Linda, is your group a big group or a small group? Okay, what, what, what have we, any, any gems of... Uh... <laughs> yeah. One thing we can say was to get some funding and then you can it. Yes, absolutely. You've got to deliver, haven't you? Whatever, even if it's just a brief report at the end, that's a good, good point. That sort of commitment to either deliverable or to someone else, like you said, is probably quite important, isn't it? You know, always, if it's just up, oh, well, if it's deadline for me, well, perhaps, you know, which I think is probably a feature of this programme as well. I don't know about you, but that really helped me, knowing that I've got deadlines. So we're all, yeah, we're, presumably we're all working in a, a little bit sort of like that. So that's, that's a good point. Uh, what was this group? Was this one big group? <laughs> a small group, Yeah. Any, anything to add? Well, this is one that we were talking about, and as soon already mentioned, it's about um, working with, I think it was your suggestion about working with students. Yes. And because um, I was saying I haven't been able to do anything with them, but actually I've got a paper with the students. Brilliant. I just forgot about that. Yeah. Because, yeah. And then it's the same thing you commit yes. them to working with somebody else, especially with students. Absolutely, you, you can't not meet the deadline, can you, with a student? Yeah. <laughs> that would be a bit. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want to do. Um, the last thing I was going to say is an abstract of what was right up in the paper, and it completely ruined my summer. Oh, because yes. I spent all summer writing papers and I'm not going to do it for a year. And I'm never going to do it again. No, good, good <laughs> tip, yeah. Look what's required and think, can I do that realistically? Yeah, that's a good one. And then I think this is our final group then. Yes, Have I missed any? I don't want to be, make sure I'm not missing. We had, um, we had um, two ideas really, and I was trying to connect them though, with some overarching work. Because one of them was synergy, 
means try and, uh, it was discussed earlier about trying to research something that uh, is connected closely to your teaching, but in particular now I advise colleagues in education uh, to connect it to their knowledge exchange work or their ambition for knowledge exchange work. It's a more commercial direction if you like to that. But anyway, that's, that was simply, but when we talked around that a lot, Matt's introduced the idea of using existing data, and there are some big data sets, you know, um, and in education, I'm afraid, size matters and numbers count, you know, they, they, it really does, so mixed methods is very, very powerful uh, compared to politics, because I'm afraid that if you want to change the world, then that's a fact. So as well as using existing data, the big data idea, um, the existing databases and doing some number crunching, we also talked about the data that's lying around in institutions. You know, there's so many studies that are interview based about assessment, and yet the student assignments and grades and, and feedback from tutors just lying around, thousands of them, digital as well now. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of an online um, discourse and that sort of thing. So we had the idea somehow, so I think it's pragmatism, it's yeah. kind of being fairly pragmatic about synergy and using existing data, but also don't forget that when you get your PhD, you'll be the go to girl that topic. You need that topic to have some kind of uh, broad audience and value um, because that's, that's what you're going to go for. So mm -hmm. you need to make sure you've got some value. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add that we didn't, we didn't sort of get round to? Um, obviously, we've got discussion over lunch and so on, but okay. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for your contributions. I hope that wasn't too disruptive and too uh, uncomfortable. I don't think it was. Uh, and I look forward to chatting over lunch. Thank you. Okay, thanks for being here.